exactly 49 years ago to the day my parents met for the very first time. It was clearly love at first sight, as it led rapidly to Papa's proposal and then on to their wedding. It has been said that my mother does not make swift decisions. However, the fact that the marriage took place six weeks before Ma's 20th birthday indicates that when it is important, Ma is swift. Ma would like it to be emphasized that this decision was not only swift, but brilliant, as it led to the greatest privilege in her life, the sharing of that life with Dad. This meeting and Ma's swift decision combined to create the foundation of the first of my father's three great loves, his family. His second great love was the place we call home, Clandon, and the third of his great loves was history, which he combined to great effect with tomorrow's history, current affairs. The evidence of, for his insatiable appetite for information was provided by the three to four historical tomes that he would have on the go at any one time. Knowledge of today's news would be acquired from his endless array of daily newspapers, the many periodicals, and the hours of television news bulletins. To him, the 24-hour news channel was manna from heaven. From these endless historical tomes, Papa would draw comparisons with the events and theories of the day. These comparisons then guided his not inconsiderable contribution to the political debate over the last 40 years. Without doubt, the author that gave Dad the greatest pleasure, as well as providing the greatest tome, was Edward Gibbon. And as such, I wish to read by far and away Papa's favorite passage. The Christian world was at length provoked by their obstinacy and fraud. They were deserted by their cardinals who embraced each other as friends and colleagues. And their revolt was supported by a numerous assembly of prelates and ambassadors. With equal justice, the Council of Pisa deposed the popes of Rome and Avignon. The conclave was unanimous in the choice of Alexander V and his vacant seat was soon filled by a similar election of John XXIII, the most profligate of mankind. But instead of extinguishing the schism, the rashness of the French and the Italians had given a third pretender to the chair of St. Peter. Such new claims of the synod and conclave were disputed. Three kings of Germany, Hungary, and Naples adhered to the cause of Gregory XII, and Benedict XIII, himself a Spaniard, was acknowledged by the devotion and patriotism of that powerful nation. The rash proceedings of Pisa were corrected by the Council of Constance. The Emperor Sigismund acted a conspicuous part as the advocate of the protector of the Catholic Church, and the number and weight of civil and ecclesiastical members might seem to constitute the States General of Europe. Of the three popes, John XXIII was the first victim. He fled and was brought back a prisoner. The most scandalous charges were suppressed. The Vicar of Christ was only accused of piracy, murder, rape, sodomy, and incest. 